is part 16 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss self-referencing association entity framework with database-first approach. Let's understand the self-referencing association with an example. We'll be using this employees table for this demo. This employees table is a self-referencing table. That's because to get an employee's manager name, we take the manager ID column value and look up that value in the employee ID column of the same table. For example, to get John's manager name, we look up the manager ID column value, which is 5 here, and then we look up that value in the employee ID column. 5 is Lara, so John's manager is Lara. So this table here is a self-referencing table. Now, when we use Entity Framework and when we generate an entity model based on this table, we will end up with an employee entity as you can see here. Notice that there is a self-referencing association that's automatically generated and there are also two navigation properties, employees1, employee1. Let's look at this in action. So obviously the first step here is to create this table itself, which I have already done. And here is the SQL script that can do it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. To this project, let's add an ADO.NET entity data model. And let's call this employee model. And we want to generate our model from the database. So select that option and click next and give the connection string a meaningful name. Let's call this employee DB context and click next. So this should connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views and stored procedures. So let's select this employees table and let's give this model namespace a meaningful name. Let's call it employee model and click finish. So this should generate the employee entity based on the self-referencing employees table. Notice that there is a self-referencing association here and there are two navigation properties. Now, if we right click on this employees one navigation property and go to its properties, look at that the multiplicity of the employees one navigation property is set to many. So this property of the employee object is going to give us you know, multiple employees who are direct reports of uh, a manager. So basically, using this navigation property, we are going to get um, all the subordinates of a given manager. Okay, and if you look at this property right here, employee one navigation property, and if you go to its properties, look at the multiplicity, it is zero or one. Now, if you take an employee, an employee may or may not have a manager. For example, if you look at the data that we have right here, you know, Lara, you know, has one manager. Similarly, Mark has one manager. But if you look at Ben, he doesn't have a manager. Why? He's the super boss, so he doesn't have a manager. But, you know, employees in general directly report to one manager. Typically, an employee has got only one manager. Super boss doesn't have a manager. So the relationship here is, I mean, the multiplicity here is zero or one. So this property is going to return an employee who is a manager. But then look at the names that Entity Framework has auto-generated for these navigation properties. You know, these doesn't really make sense. Now, if we have to write some code based on these navigation property names, then that code will not be readable and in the longer term, you know, it will not be maintainable as well. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's say, for example, we want to generate you know, an output like this. We want to display employee name and their respective manager name on a web form. So to achieve this, what we would do, we would drag and drop a grid view control and then we write some link queries. So let's actually flip to Visual Studio. So to this project, let's go ahead and add a web form. And let's drag and drop a grid view control. Let's first of all set the style attribute here. Let's set font family to Arial. Let's drag and drop the grid view control onto the web form. And let's auto format this and choose colorful scheme. All right, now let's get to the code behind file. So, so far what we have understood is that employees one navigation property is going to give us, you know, the direct reports of the subordinates and employee one navigation property is going to give us the manager employee. Okay, so within the code behind file, we have grid view one control. So we're going to set its data source property. So data source equals, we have the employee DB context, which is generated. First, let's create an instance of 
employee db context. Let's call it employee db context equals new employee db context. And then we are going to use the db context object and it has got obviously employees property which is going to give us all the employees. Now based on that list, now this employees okay you know we have among these employees list that is returned we have employees as well as that is subordinates as well as managers now we want to produce this output that you see here employee name and their respective manager name so to achieve that what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know this link expression that we are writing here will, will be executed on each employee object within this collection so what we are going to do here is um, select a new anonymous type so new type and let's convert those you know whatever new types that we generate to a list and that is set as the data source for the grid view control and then let's invoke data bind okay so now in this anonymous type what do we want we want two columns I mean two properties basically employee name and manager name so employee name equals so we have the employee object here so employee object dot employee object has got employee name property which is going to return us the name of the employee and then we also need manager name so let's call the property manager name so within the anonymous type that we are building you know we are going to have two properties employee name and manager name so manager name how are we going to get the manager name so this employee object or the employee entity has got employee one navigation property remember the multiplicity on that um, navigation property is zero or one so typically a man an employee has one or zero managers right so that is the um, property navigation property which is going to return the manager of a given employee so we have the manager employee object and we are going to use employee name property of it which will return us the manager name of the given employee now with these changes let's actually run this and see what output we get okay notice that we are getting the output that we expect employee name manager name now if you look at what we have on the slide for Ben there is no manager and it displays this text super boss so how to get that text um, that's straightforward here manager name if this employee one what is it returning it is returning the manager of an employee but there could be employees who does not have a manager in which case this employee one property that is the employee one navigation property is going to return null so if this EMP dot employee one if that is going to be null right then we want the manager name to be something like super boss he doesn't have a manager so let's call um, you know the manager uh, I mean let's set this text for the manager name column okay um, for that employee and then if it is not now then obviously we are going to employee one navigation property and then selecting the employee name so with this change let's go ahead and run this so there we get the output that we have seen on the slide now if you look at this code okay is this readable in the first place what is this employee one means right I mean the names that entity framework has given to these navigation properties they're not really meaningful but entity framework has done its best you know to give those names so but we can rename them to you know some meaningful names so let's flip to employee model here so employees one this is going to return us all the subordinates so let's call it subordinates and this navigation property right here employee one this is going to return a manager of an employee so let's call that manager okay let's save these changes and then once we go to the code behind file obviously we are going to have compilation errors because this employee entity no longer has this employee one navigation property instead we have renamed that to manager so if employees manager is null that means we don't have a manager for that employee in which case we want the manager name to be super boss 
on the other hand if there is a manager then we want that manager's employee name okay so now if you look at this code this code is more readable and obviously if it's more readable it will be more maintainable as well okay so let's run this and see if we get the same output so the output is the same but now we have you know meaningful names for those navigation properties and another thing that I want to show you is when you go to the properties of this self-referencing association notice that there is a cell uh, referential constraint and obviously here employees table is mapped to itself so here the principal is employees table and the dependent you know it has given employees one which means it's the same instance of that table and the principal key here is employee ID and dependent property is manager ID okay that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day